Hey, 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 Superior Shea fans and other humans, how are you doing today? It's 19 of December, 2023. I'd like to start off by wishing a happy birthday to my lovely Wee Fei. I know you'll never watch this video, and who can blame you, but uh, yes, that is by far the greatest thing that ever happened to me in my life, was running into this woman on the street in 2005 in Midtown Manhattan. Uh, it was pretty close to love at first sight. Anyway, what do I have here today? Uh, a customer had written that uh, he bought the concave lapping plate and thus made his own set of stones. One shape like this with this very strong curve, the other one with the much uh, less pronounced curve that's more intense that way. And uh, he's having trouble. He wants to know, how do you set the bevel on a stone that has a curve going across the stone's short axis. It's not flat this way. Well, first let's talk about briefly, why is it curved this way? It's curved this way so that you isolate the contact, point, the contact patch just a little bit. Um, if your stone is completely flat this way, then th there's no such thing as a perfectly flat razor. So the razor is always a little bit away from straight, either going toward the downside or going toward the upside. So what would happen is when you take it to a flat thing, the grinders say you will, you will carve out a thicker, flatter, less thin-tipped object from inside the less flat, thinner, and wider object, if that makes sense. Whichever side was was uh, deviating, uh, you know, down. Let's say when you're when you're doing this with the flat one, you know, you can you can do like a rolling X to try to make it so that you don't put more stone time than necessary while creating a, a flat bevel. But when you're doing a rolling X, what are you doing? You're isolating the contact patch, which is the same thing that a that a that a hone that has a gentle curve this way. The curve the other way, the curve going the length, that's the much more important curve for shaving comfort. So this one is for, for feel on the stone, but also just to minimize hone wear, because theoretically, if you give all of the razor just enough time to set the bevel, you would have been able to set in an edge with, with uh, keeping the apex of the edge further away from the back of the razor. And I feel like that's a very noble pursuit to try that. Try being the operative word because it's not easy to do it without over honing something somewhere. But anyway, this is this beautiful convex uh, Pyrenees stone on this side, Belgian blue stone on the other side. I just wanted to show it to you because I've been using one copy of this. I, I made uh, two copies. I've been using one copy of it and oh, it's just a glorious surface. This is an incredible hone that's really great for straight razor use. But what I'm going to do here is let me push the pause button so that I can rearrange my shot. All right, that's not the worst shot in the world, is it? Okay, there's three different ways that I think you can try to solve the, uh, the idea of getting equal wear across the back of the bevel while working on a curved stone. This is a, the 3x8 water stone that I use on a regular basis and it's been soaked for a while. The first way is instead of having right now the top the top center of the stone is is closest to the ceiling and uh, the whole thing is level but I'm going to make it not level so now this part is closer to the ceiling than the top center because I used this bean bag and arched it so that that part is is the closest part and so what you would do is you would just Hold the razor parallel to the ceiling and you're just drawing the razor off of the stone as you go down the 8 inches. So that's pretty easy to do. The drawback is that you only put wear on this side. I can already see it getting swarfy. So you can rotate the stone a lot and uh, put some water on there. But 
and that helps a little bit, but you're never really putting much use in the middle of the stone, so you end up having to resurface the stone a lot more. I cannot say that I ever saw a grinder in Germany on their convex stones do it that way, but that is the simplest way to do it, is just to make the part next to your wrist with the razor's tang the highest part that you work on. Okay, and here's, here's the way that I've seen the, the German grinders do it. They'll just isolate one spot. So they'll do half strokes, and they're only doing the heel right now. And then they'll do, uh, here they're doing the middle of the, stone, of the razor. And then they're doing the toe of the razor. And then they go and flip on the other side and do the same thing. They do the toe a little bit. Of course, they're able to do it without having this little balancing finger. So that's one way to do it. All right, let me show you finally. This is the, the way that I've seen most of the German grinders do it this way. And it is quite a challenge, but this would be the goal to be the best for keeping the use on the stone's surface as equal as possible. And in this way, we put the base of the stone is level to the floor. The summit of the top center of the stone is the highest point relative to the ceiling. And I'm going to try to do like a circuit. I'm going to try to lean, you know, this is a curve that we're looking at. It doesn't show up very much in the camera, but there is a curve. So you lean down here at the at the beginning of the stroke back here, and then the idea is you finish with, with this part facing like that. I'm no good at this, but I just want to show you that this is a way to do it. trying to keep my little record needle hand out of the camera shot. I don't... Um, if, if you do this one, you tend to put the most wear on the middle. So try to make it so that when you do your stroke, that you try to hold on this part more than before you go to this, and then try to finish a lot on the toe. That wasn't a bad one, Jared. When, when you do the first one I showed you, where you just hold this railing high and draw everything while keeping the razor level to the ceiling and not, not, tra not tracing the curve of the stone, uh, what I notice is uh, that, that's a very easy way to do it, but you, end up, you, you tend to, even though it's only on there for a split second, because you begin the stroke with the heel aligned with this edge, the first centimeter, you really you really put a lot in quickly. So it only needs to be on there for a split second, and then you could focus on the rest of the cutting edge. Because you're doing more to the first centimeter of the razor in a really little time than, uh, than you do with the rest of it. And I'd like to point out something else with the curved stone. Um, when you're setting in the edge, it's really easy just to go backwards. Yeah, you, you are creating a little bit of a burr, the little, the little foil piece at the tip of the edge, but you're gonna work that off later. Uh, I, I find it a lot easier to tell where I'm going when I'm grinding in the back of the bevel by going in the stropping direction rather than the honing direction. And if you're worried about it, you can just do a couple of quick strokes and that's, that little burr will be gone. But um, when I try to set a razor that's been purchased new using this thing, I, do, I deliberately do not let this intensely curved stone go all the way to take over the cutting edge. Uh, if somebody sends a razor in for honing, I'm, I am going to do that. But when you do that, you know, we don't have a little 12 inch wheel. We don't have the pleasure of a 12 inch wheel that we can hold the spine off the wheel and the wheel is so curved that uh, there would be no chance for stray marks from the swarf and whatnot to end up in the hollow, the, the hollow grind of the razor, you know, the razor's concavity. Uh, that's a big problem if you want to say that cosmetic marks are a problem. That's a big problem with this six and a half foot wheel. The, wheel that I've created, which is the best option from what's still remaining, but not as good as a 
Pike Hard, Hard Arkansas wheel, which doesn't exist anymore. But uh, when I sell a brand new razor and someone asks for further honing, I deliberately only take this step, which starts its scratch marks toward the spine side of the razor's bevel, and they creep toward the front of the razor, and I would stop once I see this one getting close to but not overtaking the edge. I would say I would give it um, two-thirds or so of the bevel span before I would switch to a longer shape with a finer grit stone. And the the typical size of such a bevel on a six inch raz six eighth inch razor is about uh, 1.1 mm when you start. On a 5 eighths razor, it's about 0.8 to 1.0 mm. Okay, let's go soak him again. Hey, that was fun. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.